what I feel this weekend is the strongest group of people have come together to nail this. When it's about pressure, embrace it, love it. We have the most awesome job in the world. We work with racing cars. We race them around the weekend. We represent the best car brand in the world. And when the pressure kicks in, this makes the difference between us and all the rest, because we love pressure. Pressure is the best feeling when it's up there. Embrace it, love it, don't fear it. Don't try to be extra special, extra terrestrial. Five seconds, nobody needs five second pit stops. We just do a solid job, we are kind. We are ruthless, we are cold blooded, we execute because we love pressure. So let's get out there and kick some ass. Thank you very much. The news came in a press release, unexpected and at the same time painful. The end of an unprecedented era. The big news is that Mercedes is quitting DTM. Das war der Hammer für Motorsport Fans. Damit verliert die Tourenwagen Serie ihren erfolgreichsten Mitfahrer. 30 years of touring car sport. Over. It is the last appearance in DTM of Mercedes-Benz. After 30 glorious years, I'm very, very sad to see them go. And Schneider takes the series, takes the title. Albus swings to the outside, Papik locks up. Hexa tries to defend, Albus has got past Papik. He's going to get the lead, is he right the way around the outside? Yes, he is, a fantastic bit of driving. But up to the checkered flag, Bruno Spengler wins for the first time in DTA. Yeah, green! Green's gone! Green! Amazing! Green has done it! A win from the young man from the UK. For team boss Uli Fritz, a year of particular responsibility for team and Mark begins. The aspirations are the same as every season, but to win the championship this year would have special significance. Mark geht immer in die Saison und versucht die Saison so anzugehen, dass man erfolgreich ist. Und erfolgreich heißt am Schluss die Meisterschaft zu gewinnen. Natürlich ist auch eine gehörige Portion Wehmut dabei. Es ist ein bisschen mehr Druck dahinter, weil man weiß, dass jetzt die letzte Chance ist. The final chapter of a 30-year success story. Marked by drivers who became legends. Shaped by people with inexhaustible commitment and major figures of motorsport for whom the DTM is more than just a racing series. Schau dir mal die Tribüne an. Wie voll. Da war die ganze Ausgangswoche voll. Das ist bemerkenswert, ja. Mit euch beiden, den Hans Werner und dir, da war mal richtig geballte Energie. Ja, ja. <lacht> ja. Aber ganz schön feurig waren wir damals. Das wüsste ich gar nicht. It all began with this man, Professor Jürgen Hubert. In 1988, the then board member of Mercedes-Benz makes a solitary decision. Despite, or maybe because of all the potential difficulties, he takes the daring step to bring a Mercedes works team back to motorsport. We had difficult times. And the question was, what does it do to bring the mark again? How can we can we push a new car? How can we give him a character? Das heißt, Motorsport 
war ein Hilfsmittel, um in einer schwierigen Zeit die Marke Mercedes wieder aufzupolieren. Es gibt dieses Sprichwort, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Daran glaube ich nicht so ganz. Ich glaube nicht an die Kurzfristigkeit ähm, der motorsportlichen Erfolge. Ich glaube aber sehr wohl daran, dass sportliche Erfolge langfristig die Marke shapen. He is destined to lead the racing team under foreseeably unfavorable conditions. Pressure from day one. Da ist einer, der ist nicht nur ehrgeizig, der ist in gewisser Weise auch ein Getriebener, der den Erfolg sucht und der den Erfolg will. Und das war natürlich für mich eine ideale Basis, um darauf aufbauend dann auch den Erfolg zu bekommen, den wir uns äh, gewünscht haben. Für mich war eigentlich immer das Ziel, von Mercedes akzeptiert zu sein. Also als ich zum ersten Mal 89 nach Afalterbach kam, da war das eigentlich eine Werkstatt in der großen Halle. Zwischen 1000 Eisenkisten waren irgendwo zwei Hebebühnen und da standen zwei Rennautos hin drauf. Und dann ist der Aufwärts ganz stolz mit mir hingegangen, hat mir die Autos gezeigt. Und da habe ich am ersten Moment gedacht, naja. But something is evolving here, initially on the drawing board. Something big. Motorsport history. Ja, und dann muss ich ganz ehrlich sagen, dann ist das explosionsartig gewachsen. Unglaublich, eine wahnsinnige Leistung. Und da muss man immer aufrecht wirklich den roten Teppich von hier bis nach Paris ausrollen. Der hat gearbeitet wie ein Wahnsinniger. Das ist ein Kämpfertyp. Du musst ein Kämpfertyp sein. Und ein Kämpfer, glaubt, gibt nie auf. Er hat immer was am Schnurren im Kopf, was er für die ganze DTM gemacht hat. Aber kann man nur davor ziehen. Already in the early years, the team scores some significant successes. Es war immer was los, wenn der Roland gewonnen hat. Er hat es tierisch genossen, Domingos Piedade. Da haben wir ganz eifrig mitgelebt. Faction. Da kann ich ewig gucken. Traumhaft. Then in 91, a man joins the team who is destined to change motor racing fundamentally. He bridges the gap between sport and business. Ich wurde von Herrn Hubert gefragt, wen ich denn meinte, wen man nehmen sollte als Motorsportchef. Ich sagte, ja, Hauk wäre nicht schlecht, wäre verdammt gut. Ja, war auch verdammt gut und äh, war verdammt, verdammt gut. Sie erleben Situationen, ähm, in denen Sie sichtbar, für, für die Öffentlichkeit sichtbar Niederlagen erleben und einstecken müssen, was äh, außerordentlich hilfreich ist im Leben. Wir hatten auch Glück mit Norbert Haug, der in schwierigsten Situationen immer die richtigen Worte gefunden hat, auch für die, für die breite Öffentlichkeit. Und dazu beigetragen hat, dass wir auch dann in solchen Situationen also nicht irgendwo Schiffbruch erlitten haben, sondern immer wieder gesagt haben, ja, das ist passiert, aber es kommen auch wieder erfolgreiche Zeiten. Norbert Haug hat verstanden, diesen Motorsport auch zu verkaufen. Der Kunde ist das zahlende Publikum. Stellen Sie sich das leere Fußballstadion vor. Alle Spieler haben ihre Freude und schießen ganz viele Tore und keiner guckt zu. Also insofern ist die Vermarktung, die Präsentation, ähm, das, ist, ja, das ist der Sprit im Tank. Ohne Sprit im Tank fährt kein Auto und ohne Zuschauer muss ich keine Rennen fahren. Im Motorsport passiert es oft, dass man, sich, dass man sich verrennt, dass man vergisst, dass es eigentlich draußen noch was anderes gibt als Autorennen und das, das hat er immer sehr gut verstanden, diese Balance zu halten, einerseits den, den Kurs vorzugeben, Rennen zu gewinnen und Meisterschaften, aber andererseits das immer mit einem, im, immer im Auge zu behalten, dass es nur Sport ist, den wir machen. But sporting success remains the prerequisite for further involvement in the DTM. No one wants to be an also ran. And after four years, the summary is sobering. Lots of victories. But no title. The board is getting impatient. Is the beginning also the end? Hin und wieder hat es auch Prügel gegeben, denn wie immer, wenn gewonnen wird, sind das alle. Wenn verloren wird, sind sie der einzige Dumme. 
als äh, die vier Audis, äh, war glaube 90, in, in Hockenheim uns vorgeführt haben. Da kann ich mich daran erinnern, dass, ich, dass wir da einen schönen Auftritt miteinander hatten. Er hat mir ganz klar vorgeworfen, siehst du das nicht, dass die uns vorführen. Da war ich bedient. <lacht> ja, da war ich bedient. Ja, ich brauchte auch Erfolge bei meinen Kollegen. Und ich war unzufrieden. Ich war unzufrieden mit der Entwicklung in den Jahren davor. Ähm, ja, wir haben Rennen gewonnen, sogar teilweise eine ganze Menge, aber wir hatten keine, keine Meisterschaft für die Marke. Und das war jetzt so eine Phase, wo es wichtig war, zu dokumentieren, wir können es. Wenn so ein Gigant zu Ihnen sagt, wir müssen Meister werden, dann, äh, ich will nicht sagen, er drückt es einen, aber er sagt einem ganz klar, wenn das nicht funktioniert, dann... Äh ja, müssen wir uns umschauen, was wir dann machen. It's all about the future of a highly ambitious project. No more, no less. And with it comes the turning point. 1992. Klaus Ludwig fulfills everyone's expectations. Finally, the top of the tree. The championship. Heute, nach so vielen Jahren, da hat man schon ein anderes Verhältnis zu diesem, zu diesem Siegen, zu, diesem, zu dieser Meisterschaft. Und um ganz ehrlich zu sein, man ist schon ein bisschen stolz. Es war einfach unglaublich schön, diesen Erfolg zu haben für so eine Marke. Dieser Marke zu zeigen, dass wir das können. Twenty-six years later, they have to prove it all over again, one last time. The pressure is the same. Selecting the six drivers is a task for the team under Toto Wolf and Uli Fritz. Grundsätzlich muss man sagen, dass wir einen sehr, sehr starken Fahrerkader haben. Ich würde fast sogar so weit gehen zu sagen, es ist der stärkste in den letzten Jahren. Ähm, es ist eine gute Kombination aus Erfahrenheit ähm, und aus, aus den jungen Wilden. Arriving in La Manga, the start of the fitness week. Letzte Saison hin oder her, wir wollen abliefern und zeigen, warum Mercedes in der DTM so erfolgreich, äh, so erfolgreich war. Geht mir genauso. Ich glaube, dass man nie weiter als, als ein Jahr voraus sowieso planen kann. Und äh, hoffentlich sind wir konkurrenzfähig und können speziell wir zwei das Feld richtig aufmischen. Preparations for the new season traditionally begin on the east coast of Spain. Englishman Gary Pavitt has been driving for the three-pointed star for 15 years. 15 years. And now, suddenly, the end. There was a conference call that they'd organized Toto and, and Uli with all the drivers. I missed it. Um, Toto called me and I spoke to Toto about it and stuff. And, yeah, it was it was a real shock, and uh, still kind of is. Still, I, I I suppose when we get towards the end of the season, we'll feel it more than we do now. Now we're just preparing the same as we we do it for every season. But towards the end of the season, I'm sure it's going to hit us pretty hard that this is going to be it. This is the end. One final chapter, and everyone wants to make the very best of it. Italian Eduardo Mortara, Spaniard Daniel Juncadea, and Scott Paul de Resta complete the sextet. It's sad that this book uh, is going to close. Um, it's the last time even we're going to be in La Manga as a group. But ultimately, the success will be the thing that definitely will be what's remembered. Welcome to La Manga. This year uh, will be a special year. 30 years of Mercedes Benz touring car racing will end in October. And the tasks that are ahead of us, we can only master with the team, within the team. It doesn't mean the driver team, the six that are sitting here, but it's also engineering, mechanics. Everybody in HWA has to stick more together to deliver what we have to deliver and we want to deliver. I want to win this championship with one of your six drivers. That's the main objective. That's why we're here. They'll be contesting 20 races against the 12 best drivers touring car sport has to offer, against the top manufacturers BMW and Audi, 
And even then, to win the championship, they first have to beat their own teammates. The big thing that's going on in the factory at the moment is obviously the new evolution of the car. So, um, like we're here, getting ourselves in condition, the guys need to really get themselves in condition with the car and feel comfortable again. The cars are prepared in Affalterbach, to the northeast of Stuttgart. Until now, it's been a matter of conjecture how these high-tech racing cars will perform on the asphalt. They're the product of more than 200 people's work, and each is aware of their own individual responsibility. Man geht jedes Jahr mit dem Anspruch in die Serie Meister zu werden. Ähm, sonst würde, glaube ich, auch keiner die ganzen Strapazen äh, und, und Arbeiten auf sich nehmen. Das ist der eigene Anspruch. Äh, wir sind Racer, Motorsportler. Äh, wir gehen morgens dorthin, um abends einen Sieg einzufahren. The rules are tight, with little scope for the engineers to find an advantage. Engine reliability could thus make all the difference in this tightly fought series. Beim Rennfahrzeug steckt der Teufel im Detail. Es kann die kleinste Schraube für einen Ausfall kurz vor der Zielflagge sorgen. Wir haben zum Beispiel mal ein Fahrzeug gehabt, da hat sich eine, eine Kenad gelöst, also eine Schraubverbindung am Auspuff. Der Auspuff hat sich dann getrennt an der Stelle und das Fahrzeug ist dann abgebrannt. Das sind dann so ein, so ein Centartikel, der einen Schaden von ein paar hunderttausend Euro anrichten kann. Six cars, ready for the first race weekend in Hockenheim. But what they're really capable of, no one yet knows. Am Schluss ähm, geht es eigentlich nur um eines, nämlich in Hockenheim möglichst weit vorne dabei zu sein. Und darauf fokussieren wir uns alle. Ich kann mir keinen Rennsport vorstellen, ohne ähm, Druck äh, zu gewinnen. Ich spüre eine unheimliche Motivation bei den Leuten. Das ist unsere letzte Saison. In dieser Saison wollen wir uns von der besten Seite zeigen. Da gibt es kein, ja, wir schauen mal oder wir gucken mal, wie weit wir kommen. Wir gehen dorthin, um zu gewinnen. And then the first final attempt begins. Hockenheim, six o'clock in the morning. Can they keep pace with the competition? The first qualifying session of the season will tell. There's a tinge of sadness here because of course it is Mercedes last year in the, uh, in the DTM and uh, they will hope very much to make this a season to count. sich im Prinzip immer Gedanken, hat man alles optimal vorbereitet, hat jeder selber für sich das Beste gegeben, was er geben kann, dass man gewinnt. Das ist unser Antrieb, deswegen ist jeder hier, deswegen nimmt er die Strapazen auf sich. But the competition from Munich and Ingolstadt have also pulled out all the stops to be capable of victory. Was hat Audi gemacht? Was hat BMW gemacht? Haben sie irgendeine Nische oder ein Schlupfloch im Regnement genutzt? Hoffentlich geht beim Pitstop nichts schief, dass er die Radmutter nicht verliert. Das sind so die, die Fragen, die die Jungs im Kopf haben. The first race against the clock. The cards are on the table. Afterwards, the dream of winning one last title could almost already be over. Like in 2014 an unprecedentedly catastrophic year. Memories of a disaster. 
and it began here, in Hockenheim. Going into Hockenheim in 2014, we were in a bit of a mess and, and we weren't confident um, going into that year. Das war in Tal der Tränen 2014, Totengräberstimmung. Und das war für unsere Seelen, ja, das war grausam. Als Sportsmann kannst du verlieren. Das war ja kein Verlieren, das war ja das war ein Desaster. Ich weiß gar nicht, ich habe es verdrängt, wie, wie viel langsamer wir waren. In the fight for the championship, they were reduced to the role of spectators. The competition made fools of them. Time for a change at the top. Ulrich Fritz takes over a team which is looking for answers. Als ich das Team 2014 übernommen habe, waren wir sehr, sehr weit hinterher. Die Performance beim Auftaktrennen in Hockenheim, die war über eine Sekunde Off-Pace, das ist in der DTM eine Welt. BMW hat ganz klar ein neues Level in die DTM gebracht. Und ich glaube, da hat unser Team einfach nicht mithalten können. Und dann kam äh, 15. Da weiß jeder, wie es gelaufen ist. He will become the youngest ever DTM Champion! It has been a very good season indeed for Pascal Verlein. Wir hatten damals nicht das stärkste Auto sondern wir haben das mit Teamgeist wettgemacht. Jetzt ist es so, da kommt keine Saison mehr danach. Und du willst das mit einem, wie ich immer sagen, mit einem, mit einem Bang abschließen. All or nothing. The beginning of a race for the title or a painful, arduous farewell. driver who now goes P1 and actually wipes the floor with that previous lap record. He's done a 132-264. The man that has put it on pole position, the British star Gary Papit. The first big question is answered. Obviously, we've got, a, we've got the race to do, which is, which is going to be tough. But um, to know that at the moment, race one, we're on the pace. You know, we have a competitive car. Uh, is a good start. It's been a long while coming. Here comes that roar. Lights out. Let's go racing. It is DTM for 2018. And Gary Paffett converts that to pole position into the race lead, going through turn one with no problems at all. Then uh, already putting some tenths between himself and the BMW. And Lucas Hauer up the inside of Timo Glock now. Does he make that stick? Yes, he does. Lukey Hauer has uh, got past Marco Wittmann and he's up into P2 now. Mercedes domination at the moment, P1 and P2. Then Mercedes are really quick. Here yes. comes Gary Paffett. He's going to take the checkered flag and wins at Hockenheim. Uh, thanks, guys. Amazing job. It's going to be a good year, a very good year. Oh, yes, it is. Lucas Auer is a P2. Mercedes-Benz must be absolutely delighted. Thank you. The feelings are right now really unbelievable, because at the end we have so hart auf diese Saison hingearbeitet. Wir wissen, dass es unsere letzte Saison ist. Und hier zu gewinnen und dann noch mit dem Gary zu gewinnen, der noch nie gewonnen hat, seit ich dabei bin in den letzten viereinhalb Jahren. Das ist einfach sensationell und mir fehlen da gerade ehrlich gesagt fast die Worte. Ja, der heutige Tag war mit Sicherheit außergewöhnlich. Wie gesagt, ähm, der erste Start in die Saison, das erste Rennen ist immer mit einer extremen Anspannung verbunden. Wir sind konkurrenzfähig, haben ein super Ergebnis eingefahren, ist super wichtig für die Truppe. Als Motivationsschub nochmal für das nächste Rennen. Hockenheim, Starting Grid, Race Number 2, Pole Position Nummer 5 in seiner DTM-Karriere für Timo Glock. Everything is ready for a real spectacle. 
Wir haben gestern eine ganz gute Basis gehabt, aber wir haben gesehen, Mercedes war so ein kleines Stück äh, nach vor uns. Da stehen schon die drei Jungs hinter mir, auch die Mercedes, die mit einer geballten äh, Kraft da hinten stehen. Da stehen noch vier, vier Mercedes hintereinander, die werden natürlich Druck machen. Gary Pavitt vs. Timo Glock. Two old hands. And uh, there is Gary Paffitt getting past Joel Eriksson. So Gary Paffitt, who showed incredible pace yesterday, he's on a charge as well. He's putting the pressure on uh, Paul DeResta and is on the inside of DeResta and Gary Paffitt goes through. Next in the target sights of the Mercedes-Benz British driver is going to be the current DTM champion, René Rass. The DTM champion for 2005 is reeling in the Audi. He goes to the outside of René Rast. Now Timo Glock is vulnerable. Gary Paffitt's DRS window open. Gary Paffitt now, is he going to go inside, outside? Glock goes to the inside, Paffitt around the outside. The overtake is done, job done. Now, here comes Glock. He's coming back at him now because, of course, he's got DRS, so Gary needs to stick his elbows out, and he does! Oh, my goodness me! I mean, talk about defend. Two old stalwarts of racing here doing a fantastic job and providing such great entertainment for us. Oh, there is contact between the two of them this time. Epic. Absolutely oh, epic. Brilliant. I can hear the crowd inside. This is phenomenal. So they are trading places lap after lap. Glock stealth-like on the back of Gary Paffert. To the inside goes Timo Glock now. Gary Paffert out wide. He'll try and come underneath Timo Glock now. But this time, it's Timo's turn. There is a Timo Glock who will round the final turn and for BMW will take the victory for P3 after one of the most incredible drives, Gary Paffett. Fucking hell! Fuck, this was awesome! Best fucking racing I ever had in my life! The best fucking racing in fucking hell, Mercedes! You should not leave this championship! Let's that see the reaction enough. between himself and Gary Paffett. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, that was... Two absolute masters racing together, Ricky. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And look at the and respect. And the respect between them is, well, it's almost eye-watering to see. Wenn man so mit seinen Gegnern umgeht, dann ist man Meisterschaftskandidat, weil dann hat man sich Respekt verdient bei den Kollegen. Das haben die beiden, Timo und, und Gary, ganz sicher getan. Victory in the opening race, a fast car and still a long way to go. We just have to uh, keep scoring good points, you know. To win a championship, you have to consistently be strong. The car is really good, really fast. And as a team, we have to keep the car, keep the pace in the car we have. And I think we're going to have a very good season if we do that. At the Lausitz ring, the team gets off to a great start. This is uh, Eduardo Mortara then, who will be heading for the uh, checkered flag. <laughs> But not everything is perfect. In the DTM, hundredths of a second can make the difference, the blink of an eye. This year of all years, somewhere the team is losing a whole damn second. So far, we've not seen quick stops from Mercedes-Benz. Wasn't a quick one for Lucas Hour. 8.8. We run the clock and uh, Nico Muller out in 6.8 and Paul de Resta 8.2. Bit slow pit stop for Paul de Resta. The competition is simply better when the cars are at a standstill. See, you know, they, they're, a, they're a couple of seconds quicker, aren't they?
dass ich war für den Fahrer, okay, wir haben gewonnen, für die Marke, alles hin und her. Aber wenn dann der Pitstop dabei scheiße gelaufen ist, dann das hast du immer im Hinterkopf die ganze Zeit. Die Fahrer, die, die reißen sich da einen Arsch auf auf der Strecke halt und äh, kämpfen jedes Hundertstel und jedes Zehntel. Und dann beim Pitstop machst du dann halt eine Sekunde oder eineinhalb Sekunden bist du dann halt weg. Das ist halt so viel Zeit, was die da wieder aufholen müssen. Und wenn du siehst, was Audi halt macht oder BMW, die machen da Pitstops, da, da sind wir noch weit davon entfernt. Großes Kompliment an alle hier. Aber für all das können wir uns nichts kaufen, wenn wir nicht im Pitstop besser werden. Es ist eine Frage der Zeit, bis wir Rennen Siege in der Boxengasse verlieren werden. Und das kommt hauptsächlich daran, dass unser Hauptkonkurrent im Moment der BMW einfach sau schnell ist. Was wir für einen Charakter haben und was wir für ein Team sind, das zeigt sich jetzt, wenn es problematisch wird. Und hier haben wir ein Problem, ein massives. Ich weiß genau, was ich jetzt gerade tue. Tut mir schon leid. Ich kann den Schlagschrauber nicht so schnell bedienen wie ihr. Und trotzdem frage ich, dass es morgen schneller geht. Ich weiß, dass ich jetzt einen Druck erhöhe. Im Sport finde ich schon immer Leute, die besser sind. Aber das muss der Ansporn sein, besser zu werden. Und die sind gerade besser. Pixel Masters, BMW. Okay. Jürgen Eberhardt is responsible for the pit stops. For everyone on the team, the competition's excellent tire changing is an unpleasant surprise. Erstmal natürlich enttäuscht. Wir haben viel gearbeitet, alle miteinander. Und ähm, ich habe viel Vertrauen bekommen von äh, sehr vielen Leuten von meinem Team. Und Jürgen äh, ist, ein, ist ein, ein Vorzeiger Sportler, der nimmt sich das zu Herzen. Und äh, deswegen ist auch genau der richtige Mann dafür. Äh, und wir müssen das gemeinsam äh, rumreißen, dieses Rote. Ich würde jetzt mal sagen, eine Sekunde fehlt. Und das ist viel. Ja. Das ist ziemlich viel. Time's running out. In 14 days the team travels to Hungary. Error analysis. Okay, also gehen wir gleich zur großen Baustelle, Rennen 2. Schauen wir mal gleich die Standposition, die ist eigentlich wie immer. Ähm, aber hier sehen wir, dein Winkel von der Luftlanze ist extrem ähm, gegensätzlich zum Loch von der Luftlanze. Das ist ja eigentlich so der Winkel und du bist so. Also es rein logisch kann das ja nicht gut gehen. Und dann bist du... Also ja, das gut, schauen wir uns jetzt so viel Zeitverlust war das nicht, ne? Puh, das ist eine halbe Sekunde, mein Freund. Schau dir nochmal an, wie viel Zeit du da verlierst. Von da steht das Auto und von da geht es erst hoch und hier sehen wir die Zeit. Das sind 0,68. Also du musst, ist, ist, ist dir wahrscheinlich klar, aber nur nochmal in den Kopf reinkriegen, du musst darauf vorbereitet sein, dass der abrupt bremst. Ja? Und das, weil das ist eigentlich beim Auer passiert. Der hat dann abrupt gebremst. Und du darfst dich du darfst nicht darauf verlassen, dass die immer zu, zu weit fahren, sagen wir mal. Was natürlich dir nicht hilft, ist, dass das Loch, das Luftlanzenloch, die gleiche Farbe hat wie das Auto. Das heißt, es bestimmt vom Sicht her mit deinem schwarzen Visier nicht optimal. Deswegen würde ich sagen, wird man das anpassen. Okay? Ja. Das war's eigentlich schon. Dankeschön. Bitte. Also. For Sergei and the whole pit stop crew, it's now a question of practicing the basics. Pit stops, the nine person crew work hand in hand, one wheel gun for each side. The smallest mistake taking off or putting on the 25 kilo wheels means time lost, which no one in the DTM can afford. Stop. 
mit zwei Schritten anzugeben. Das muss ich machen. Ja, du machst so. Ja. Ja, ja. Das war aber, weil ich hängen geblieben bin mit der Hand in der Feld. Ja, ja, ja. Meistens ist es so, im freien Training kristallisiert sich ein bisschen raus, welcher Fahrer eher früher oder später stoppt. Und die Tendenz würde eh meistens halten. Das heißt, man da muss ich mich nachrichten. Ja. Okay. The turning point is planned for Budapest. Weather mixed of sunshine and clouds. Again, one or two hefty showers could form in the area, but as we speak, it should be dry. We have Rast, who's very quick. On the Sunday, five Mercedes drivers take the first five places on the grid. The conditions are good. Getting past one's own teammates in a race like this can only happen in the pits. The pit stops can make the difference. We're in a luxury position where we have uh, five Mercedes at the front, so getting off the line, getting off the start is important, and also trying to make time around the pit stops, around the strategy, trying to make time on your teammates. You know, we're all in the same team and we have to do the best for the team, but we're all trying to beat each other as well. So yeah, the pit stops are going to be important. The weather could really uh, shake things up in the race. In a meteorological lottery like this, the strategy department can only react. But nothing updated, blah, blah, blah. See, I don't like that. The cloudburst everyone fears comes shortly after the race begins. So the wiper is on now, so uh, look at uh, Gary Papagnetto and Mortara. All of a sudden, look at this, it is really beginning to come down in certain parts of the circuit, Chris. So look at this before this requesting pit. If that means wet, we give him so wet now. Correct? Edo said shit yes. like pit. I said no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they should pit now. Um, we need to pit now as yeah, soon as they ask. Yeah, as soon as we need to orchestrate it, yeah? We need to orchestrate the pit in comes Lucas Hauer. Now, yesterday the Mercedes-Benz crew were not the quickest in terms of uh, changing those tyres. What the drivers don't know is that the concrete surface of the pit lane is as slippery as an ice rink. Oh, oh, and he's made a mistake! Oh, no. I think he's probably locked the car up coming into the garage and the damage to the front. I had no brakes in, but somebody needs to get me. We see the ambulance going down the uh, pit lane now to attend to uh, the marshal. Put the boys back in the box. We're not going in this lap. Marshal, back in. There's too much water. Should I pit? Copy box, copy box. The one side is gerade was Schlimmes passiert. Die andere Seite ist aber, du weißt, dein Auto kommt. Du musst jetzt abfertigen. We already had a shunt. Be very careful going into the concrete box. Slow, slow, slow. We had an incident in the pits. I couldn't do anything, I couldn't do anything. It's okay, you know, stay calm, stay calm. We push you to the pantry behind. I hope everything is right there. Everyone okay? The pit stop crew was it bad? The heat was very bad, so we need to see. Among the injured is Sergei. Suddenly, everything else is unimportant. For a few minutes, the sport disappears into the background. Das sind so Momente, wo du wirklich äh, feststellst, dass in Motorsport Gefahren herrschen, die man vielleicht manchmal verdrängt und die einem dann wieder schmerzlich in, in Erinnerung gerufen werden. Mir ist es das erste Mal aufgefallen am Norrisring vor einem Jahr, als der Gary den schweren Unfall hatte. Oh no! That is a hasty impact! 
That's a really nasty impact. It hurts, but I think I'm okay. It hurts, but I think I'm okay. There's a point where you change from from that racing method to ah, you know, now we're in the middle of a crash. But once a car starts to slide, um, then you have zero control. Another scary moment in '89 at the Nürburgring. In the Bergauf phase, the auto verloren. Und dann sehe ich dieses letzte Auto. Ich habe wirklich im Moment habe ich gedacht, ach, wenn das jetzt nicht gut geht, dann bist du tot. Ich hatte nichts. Ich hatte zwar mal ein paar Knaller, habe mir aber nie weh getan. Aber wenn du dir erstmal richtig weh tust und die Beine sind gebrochen und die Knochen sind kaputt oder Schlimmeres, ich glaube, dann wird man nicht mehr der Alte sein. Und äh, dieses Glück hatte ich eben in meiner Karriere. And it's not only on the racetrack that danger lurks. In particular, accidents in the pit lane can cause serious injury. The team is constantly at the mercy of enormous forces. As long as you are having injuries yourself, it's fine. It's quite a lot more difficult when you cause injuries. These are special moments, uh, you know, you always, when you have like incidents inside the pit lane. Edo hat mich gefragt, ob uns was passiert ist, und dann habe ich dann gesagt, nee, ist alles okay, wir stehen alle noch. Hab dann aber schon gesehen, dass im Sergei nicht so gut geht. Race mechanic Sergei suffers a foot injury. He'll be out of action for several weeks. Ich glaube, das Schlimmste, was wir uns vorstellen konnten, ist heute passiert. The worst case happened. Uh, unser Sport hat heute Leute verletzt. Mein wichtigster Punkt ist, dass wir hier alle und ihr alle okay seid. Um, mehr will ich jetzt gar nicht groß sagen. Das ist mal die Wichtigste, dass wir alle gesund sind hier. Und wir werden auch unserer Verantwortung gerecht werden, den Marshalls gegenüber. Ganz sicher. Ich glaube, es ist auch klar, dass wir heute nicht großartig die Gläser heben. Weil, wie gesagt, unser Sport hat heute Menschen verletzt. Und deswegen uh, werden wir das ganz sicher nicht machen. Ich hoffe, das ist für euch alle okay. Okay? Uh, see you in der Falderbach. Thank you. Ihr wollt einfach noch heim, ne? But Sergei will carry on, like everyone else. And yet, Budapest is the first major setback for the team and their championship ambitions. Martin hat mich noch abends angerufen, ob alles okay ist. Ich hatte ja nichts und so, dann hat er mir berichtet, wie es um Serge geht aktuell. Und ja, ich bin dann normal zur Arbeit gegangen. Focus on the next race. But the after effects of Hungary can still be felt. Was mir selber passiert ist, das realisiert man eigentlich erst später. Was hätte eigentlich noch passieren können? Ich muss aber dazu sagen, ich bin ja jetzt schon 15 Jahre dabei. Jetzt ist man ein bisschen älter. Denk mal auch so drüber nach, ja, was, was, was machst du jetzt, wenn irgendwas fehlt an dir oder so, ne? Was, was kannst du dann weitermachen? Das sind so Gedanken. But the attitude remains the same. A basic requirement for success. Ich würde sagen, die Leute finden uns, so wie wir diesen Sport auch gefunden haben. Die Arbeit, die, die Mechaniker dann bis in den Morgenstunden an dem Auto schrauben, ähm, das geht nur mit Leidenschaft. Und da haben wir das große Glück, dass wir nicht nur den Sport betreiben, sondern auch die alle gemeinsam äh, die Möglichkeit haben, diese Marke zu vertreten, Mercedes. Und ähm, das äh, verbunden mit der Passion äh, lässt die Leute dann einfach die, diese extra Meile gehen. Und ich äh, möchte immer unterstreichen, dass das Wollen, nicht das, das Müssen, nicht die, die Chefs sagen, ihr müsst gewinnen, sondern ich, Fahrer, will gewinnen, ich, Mechaniker, will gewinnen. Ich investiere in mich, in die Marke, in das Team, wenn wir gemeinsam gewinnen. Now they can't wait for a minor reset of the Norris Ring Street Circuit. They have to get Budapest out of their heads. Also ich denke, die meisten können das ganz gut ausschalten, weil sonst kannst du es nicht machen. Das ist wie beim Fahrer, wenn er einen Unfall hat, muss er ja auch irgendwie weitermachen. 
Und wenn ich jetzt Angst hätte, oder dann würde ich sagen, ich kann es nicht mehr machen. Dann müsste ich aufhören damit. Dann muss ich halt sagen, ich kann keine Pizza mehr machen. Aber ja, ich habe jetzt keine Angst, da rauszugehen. At the start of the season, Rido Schmidt was on wheel gun. Not any longer. The team reacted to the pit stop problem by rotating the personnel. But Rido's a pro through and through. Well, am Anfang am Schlagschrauber. War jetzt nicht unbedingt der langsamste, aber jetzt im, im zum Unterschied zu Pascal auf der linken Seite war halt eine Sekunde Unterschied. Ne? Ist vielleicht auch körperlich fitter und vielleicht auch mental. Dann hat man mal getauscht. Es ist jetzt nicht so, dass ich deswegen äh, beleidigt bin oder da an mich selber denke, sondern schon fürs Team eigentlich. Weil wir wollen ja die Meisterschaft gewinnen. Da soll auch derjenige das machen, der am schnellsten ist. So Mortara leading from Vim and then it's Eng. It's Paul Deresta and Gary Pappen. Box, box, copy, box, box. Wenn der Druck da ist, dass du weißt, dass der Sieg in deiner Hand liegt. Ja? Und das unterschätzt man oft. Im Sport ist der Kopf wahnsinnig wichtig. Und das gilt eben nicht nur für den Fahrer, sondern auch für die Pitstop-Crew. So, here comes Edo Mortara. Back on the winning track. And after the victory comes a nice gesture. It's great that the uh, teams get the opportunity to be on the podium as well to share in, uh, to share in the success. Ja, ich glaube, uns geht es einfach darum, immer mal wieder ähm, Leute hochzuschicken, die wirklich einen speziellen Beitrag leisten. Ähm, engagiert sind sie zweifelsfrei alle, aber äh, es gibt eben auch Unterschiede in dem, äh, wie man Verantwortung übernimmt, wie man die, die Attitüde, die Stimmung, die man ausstrahlt. Und äh, da ist der Rido ein Role Model für das ganze Team, ist schon lange dabei. Und äh, von daher hat er sich das, glaube ich, besonders verdient. Es war schon ein geiles Gefühl. Also, ja, erlebt man ja sonst nicht so, dass man da hoch darf. Mercedes ist auf einem Roll. Pure domination in the dunes of Sandford. It's win number three for Gary Paffett. Oh, he reinforces his position right at the top of the Drivers' Championship. Followed by Paul de Resta. Yes! Man! Woohoo! Excellent race, guys. Fantastic job today. The pit stop times, too, have stabilized. Daniel Yunkadea wins at Brands Hatch in race one. Ich will zuerst meinen Jungs danken, weil äh, die haben einen sehr, sehr guten Pitstop gemacht und eine sehr gute Strategie. Und ohne den guten Pitstop und so weiter, ich könnte das Rennen nicht gewinnen. Deswegen ja, war mein Pace eigentlich sehr, sehr gut, aber wir haben alle zusammen das gewinnen. Natürlich ist es jetzt schön, zur Halbzeit vorne zu stehen in allen drei Meisterschaftswertungen. Aber da ist noch nichts, noch nichts gewonnen. Es ist so, dass da drei Premium-Hersteller gegeneinander fahren und keiner will verlieren. Und jeder kämpft bis zum letzten Moment. Ja. Despite all the warnings, it's hard to deny that Mercedes is now the favorite. Gary Paffett has a comfortable lead in the championship. The last time was six years ago. From now on, he's the one to beat. Gary is for me one with the greatest race intelligence. And when you see how often he is out of the middle field or from very far to very far to front, I think he's one of the best and not the best in the DTM. Und wenn der von vorne startet, dann wird's für jeden schwierig. Hunter number one, his own teammate of all people. Paul sammelt fleißig Punkte, hat sich jetzt da im Moment auf P2 gesetzt, aber äh, mit dem ist auch zu rechnen. Sehr unauffällig und unglaublich stark agierend dieses Jahr. Unauffällig, weil er ruhig im Team ist. Äh, Paul beeindruckt mich, wie er das gerade so macht. At 37, Gary Paffett is really in the autumn of his career. But the Brit is in great shape. 
it's a good lead in the championship, that's for sure. But it can it can it can change very quickly. The whole fairy tale story stuff doesn't 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 play on my mind at all. I mean, yeah, it would be great, but we can't influence anything like that. The championship standings and 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 the possibility of winning the title is is something that you you can't ignore. His closest competitor is from his own team, with the same resources, under the same conditions. It's individual class that makes the difference. I know he's got the same car as me, so I, I know that he doesn't have any advantage over me. He, he does seem the strongest that I've seen Paul for, for years, yeah. They still exist. Moments of relaxation between races. Where's Dada's car? Get Dada's car. Find the Mercedes and show the camera. In the leader's slipstream is father of two, De Resta. It's a role he knows well. An unremarkable start to the season and a brilliant finish. For the Scot, it wouldn't be the first time. You know, Gary's been doing a good job till now, um, but the championship is well not over. There's still 200 points up for grabs, and uh, a little bit of luck swings it my way. And you know, you, towards the end of the season, you can put in a good fight. It's how I won the championship in 2010. You know, I kind of caught up mid-season uh, and then put a massive challenge on after that, and that's what it's going to take to do it this year. The 2010 season, Paul the Resta's year and the whole teams. The Mercedes-Benz then heading towards the start of a 2010 season by taking virtually all the uh, leading points here. It was a good start to 2010. It was just a case of which one, when one of us Mercedes drivers was going to win each weekend. Yeah, it came down to the three of us, me, Paul and Bruno. Of Canada. Bruno was quite a, bit, quite a bit ahead at one point and actually um, Paul started catching up and I wasn't far behind. The breakthrough comes at Brands Hatch. Paul De Resta to take his first victory of the year. Paul De Resta it is absolute repeat of Brands Hatch and he wins race number two of his season. Once you've got the momentum on your side uh, it really kick-started my championship very late in the year. Ja, da war ich das erste Mal dabei in Shanghai. Kann mich genau erinnern an die Party, die war ziemlich gut. Paul de Resta is the 2010 DTM Champion. Ja, das war der Titelgewinn 2010. Es war wohl verdient. Yeah, I finished runner-up to Paul in the end, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't my best season by uh, by far. We both come through the, the British karting circuit. We both won the DTM Championship when we were very young, very similar career parts and we both ended up now back in the DTM uh, fighting it out. The former Formula One driver's greatest success is now eight years back. Okay. It was quite a hectic year though, wasn't it? It had a lot of ups and downs. Um, and I think the downs made the highs even more special, and I think it gave Paul even more passion and fight in him to, to go all the way to the end. He didn't give up at all. And we both know what that feeling is like together, so to replicate it would be fantastic. It would be lovely. Um, but not only that, for the children to see it now as well. He doesn't just have, I'm not his number one fan anymore. He has two more in the fan club, so it would be lovely for us all to watch him do it, and we're fully behind him. You know, given just the history of what Mercedes-Benz Motorsport is in DTM, they are the heart of this championship, and I think if they could sign off uh, with a win, regardless of who it is, we're going to have to celebrate it. Here we are then, Mizano, uh, the uh, world circuit, Marco Simoncelli then, in the dark. We increased the gap by two points in Brands Hatch compared to Zandvoort. But I feel I have more pressure this weekend because I think Paul has the momentum and he was so strong in Brands Hatch on Sunday. So I'm more worried now that he's going to give us an even more hard time <laughs> here in Misano. 
The night race is accompanied by heavy showers. But that shouldn't stop De Resta's storming run through the field. Quite the opposite. He's very focused and very determined. He knows what he wants. Once he wins a race, he gets even more confident and then he gets even stronger and then it's just like keeping the momentum. In qualifying, Paul De Resta puts down his first marker. The fight for the championship between the two Mercedes drivers comes to a head by the Adriatic Sea. Pavit on P4, and yet worlds away from his teammates pole time. Look at the guys, look at the guys, they have all the cars. That's not bad before, it's just the pole position. Yeah. Oh, already did that lap here. Yeah. I mean, post that, I have to say. Yeah, that's pretty good. 28-7, the first thing is. Paffitt's race engineer, Robert Sattler, knows exactly who his driver is dealing with. For two years, he was the man who fought for victory alongside De Resta, a period that left its mark. For me, it's very hard to actually fight against him <laughs> because I also see him as a friend. So it's quite tricky from that point of view. I wish him best, but I also want to win the championship with Gary, so that's the kind of mixed feelings I have. It's a bit odd that he's working on another car that's obviously we're competing against in the championship, but at the same time, you know, I brought him in for his experience and we're benefiting from that. And I think um, me and Rob can hold our hands up and say that we're both professionals. To put an end to his teammate's good run, Paffitt needs an excellent start. That and an aggressive drive. No easy task. De Resta is often ruthless at making the most of his pole position. Calm, collected, in the zone. I guess it's a vision that I don't really know I'm in. I'm in my comfort zone where I am. But when the team get 100% out of me, they get 100%. And I'm not here to fluff around and do the other things. The main job that they apply for me is racing their cars and racing them fast. And I think, you know, I forget about probably the surroundings, forget about how approachable I am. It's probably just a game face that comes on um, and I am quite relaxed underneath that. You know, I'm a, probably a creature of habit, but it, it's worked to now and got me where I am. So I can't really say uh, at this point at 32 years old, I'm going to change uh, for the remainder of my career. The spectacular night race gets an additional ingredient. Rain. Difficult conditions. The fight for the title is more open than ever. Here comes the start sequence when the lights go out. We will be racing. And uh, Paul de Resta, well, he bogs down a little bit. Eduardo Mortara gets right alongside him. Gary Pavin on an absolute charge, going into turn number one. And uh, almost makes it work, but Paul de Resta hangs on. He and Eduardo Mortara, now Gary Pavin moves into P2, potentially. You can see on parts of the track how it is drying out. The weather is as expected and a chaotic race ensues. I cannot see anything from the windscreen. Gary went a little bit out in the last corner and there was still a little bit of mud. And I got like uh, all the mud like into the windscreen, so I couldn't see a lot uh, actually for the, for the next 40 laps. Look at the, uh, all over the windscreen of the Edo yeah. Multara car. Here they come, here comes Paul de Resta, Gary Paffitt in. Paul De Resta and Gary Paffitt as they were. Paffitt and De Resta leave the pits with cold tyres, a disadvantage compared to their teammate Mortara, who is gradually gaining on them. The Mercedes drivers are warned to show each other consideration, but the poor visibility leads to an unfortunate mix-up. There's a touch between Gary Paffitt and Edo yeah. Mortara. <laughs> The championship leader, Paffitt, is suddenly under pressure. He takes a big risk and loses. 
Oh, it's a huge lock up there from Gary. Yeah. And a touch between uh, Philip Eng and Edo Montara. Oh, 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 they're side by side. Oh. Gar Gary's got a problem. Gary has got, got a problem, hasn't he? What happened? Oh, oh, Because going into this race, leading the uh, Drivers' Championship. For Paffitt, things couldn't have turned out worse. His planned counter-attack ends in disaster. De Resta takes his chance, ruthlessly just like in 2010. Paul De Resta wins! Edo Mortara P3. What a race, what a race. There's now a completely new situation. A feeling of frustration spreads. There's some explaining to do. I'm not 100% in the right because I did lock up and go wide, but the guy is out of control. Montana? Yeah. I locked the wheel and went wide, and he gave me no room to come back on the track. I tried to come back on the track, and he was on the white line. He, he gave me no space. He's not taking any care. He says immediately the radio party was carried out. I fucked off. He said? Yeah, he didn't see me. He was behind me for two laps already. He knew, he knew what he was doing. Much remains unclear. There is still no overall picture. But then the analysis of a fateful chain of coincidences begins. So, yeah, three seconds in sector one you were gaining. If you see the windscreen, okay. I couldn't see anything. And you don't know what, nothing about who I was racing, who I was that against. When we moved like side by side, I realized, I realized that it was you. Yeah. Backed off, locked the wheel, went straight. Okay. There was like nothing I could do. Because I was driving so hard because I didn't know what you were going to do because of what happened the lap before, but I was unaware that you didn't know it was me. It is what it is. I mean, it's happened. We have to move on. We had just done a GT race together with Gary and um, I knew that that race weekend was quite important for him and to cause his, uh, his retirement, uh, especially for the championship, was a big blow for him. Misano, a race weekend full of missed opportunities for Gary Paffett. He's lost the lead in the championship to Paul de Resta. He's already been runner-up four times, a title drivers would prefer to avoid. A win from the young man from the UK. Gary Paffett awaits the plaudits, the flags, the air horns, and takes his third victory of the year. Ah, oh, this is the old days. A little, little baby. Er ist einer der Tragsäulen dieses 30-jährigen DTM Engagements, und ich glaube, Gary ist auch ein Beispiel dafür dass man in diesem Sport auch mit Rückschlägen äh, umgehen muss. Der Gary kommt irgendwie so rüber, als wäre der brave Familienvater und eher so auf der gemütlichen Seite. Ähm, ist im Rennen allerdings dann völlig anders. Er ist sehr aggressiv im Zweikampf, hat eine unheimlich gute Racecraft. And Paffitt had the perfect teacher, the best DTM driver of all time. This is my uh, good friend Bernd Schneider. He was great, he was a great help. I learned everything from him. The legendary Bernd Schneider. Wie beschreiben Sie eine Ausnahme? Er war eine Ausnahme. Bernd war ja für mich damals der Größte, weil er hat am meisten schon erreicht bis dahin. Bernd Schneider, den verbindet man einfach auch mit einer DTM. Five titles for Mercedes-Benz. A record for eternity. Yet, there was little masterful about the start of his career. Bernd Schneider war eigentlich das Talent überhaupt. Das Erste, was er gemacht hat, in der Einführungsrunde an der Nordschleife des Auto aufs Dach zu werfen. Und da war das für mich eigentlich klar, dass der Mann eigentlich zu viel Risiko 
äh, eingeht, was ich mir nicht leisten kann. Und da war natürlich äh, Jürgen Matthäus, Domingos Piedad und der Gerhard Ungar dabei, um zu sagen, wenn wir so ein Talent kriegen, müssen wir den nehmen. Wir müssen das Risiko eingehen. Und äh, Gott sei Dank habe ich damals Ja gesagt. Schneider is anything but a daredevil. A natural, equipped with racing intelligence. The perfect mix. Er gehört ganz bestimmt zu den Fahrern, die über äh, seine Karriere die wenigsten Dellen im Auto hatte. Einmal kam er nach dem Rennen zu mir am Nürburgring und hat gesagt, den hätte ich da schnappen können. Aber dann habe ich mir dein Gesicht vorgestellt. Dann habe ich es lieber sein lassen. Und der Bernd war einfach ein, ein absoluter Meilenstein. Until today, no other driver has even come close to matching his record. His inner drive was above all characterized by his failures. Zu gewinnen ist schon schwer, aber verlieren ist noch viel, viel schwerer. Denn ähm, in der Niederlage äh, sich zu sammeln und äh, den Mut zu finden, wieder anzugreifen und zurückzukommen, das äh, schaffen nur ganz wenige. Und deswegen war das für mich eine Motivation. Ich kann mich gut erinnern, in 2004 und 2005, wo es nicht lief, zu sagen, ich muss das noch mal schaffen. Das kann nicht sein. 2006. Teammate Bruno Spengler contests Schneider's position as lead driver of the team. Schneider, however, strikes back. And Schneider takes the series, takes the title. I heard that basically it was Bernd and his engineer fighting against the whole team to beat Bruno in the championship that year. And they beat him. Um, but I think the tide had already changed and, and um, Bruno, I think, was getting all the support for the championship that year and, uh, and Bern wasn't. So I think that that was certainly a personal fight for Bern to prove to the team that he was still capable of winning the championship that year. The Druck was enormous. And uh, as a five-year DTM champion, it was much harder because the Ansprüche on me in meinem Umfeld und sogar in meinem ganz persönlichen Umfeld äh, waren enorm. Ich kann mich erinnern, 2002 bin ich Vizemeister geworden. Da kamen die Leute zu mir und sagten, ja, war eine blöde Saison, ist nicht so gut gelaufen. Da habe ich mir gedacht, was erwarten die Leute? Und da war ich schon irgendwann ein bisschen müde, mich zu rechtfertigen zu müssen. Und äh, da wusste ich, jetzt wird irgendwann Zeit, äh, zurückzutreten. Ja, das ist ein erstklassiger AMG, Mercedes-Repräsentant bis heute fährt noch Rennen und zwar emsig und schnell und konkurrenzfähig und ist als Freund und als Mensch einfach ein, ein grandios guter Typ, den ich sehr, sehr schätze. As Schneider's career nears its end, young, talented drivers try and follow in his footsteps. Among them, Gary Paffett. Nowadays I think about everything a lot and, and, and everything else, but back in this, in 2005, it just happened, I won the championship. Gary Pappert is the DTM champion of 2005, the first British driver to win it. I, I probably expected I'd do it three or four more times, I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think I did appreciate what it meant. That was all 13 years ago, an eternity. Now, with the season slowly coming to an end, he has one last chance of a second title. But at the Nürburgring, the team is confronted by changed conditions. The ITR, the series' governing body, changes the requirements on tyre pressures. At the start of the season, the Mercedes engineers had spotted a competitive advantage. Is that now over? And with it, their dominance? With the current regulations as they were, we recognised that the tyres were the most important part of that, and we prioritised making sure that our understanding and our knowledge about the tyres was as complete as it could possibly be. And we made sure that the package was the right package for what we had with the regulations that were set at the start of the year. The problem we have now is that the ITR have seen fit to mandate a higher tyre pressure than the one that we were, there was no limit before, and now we have a higher tyre pressure to work with. What that means is, is that we are now operating the car in, a, in an area where we never operated it before. A detail that could change everything. After qualifying, the picture remains at first unchanged. Paffet on P2. At the moment, it's still a two-way fight. But the competition is getting tangibly closer. 
Above all, one man, the reigning champion. The race being led by Rennie Rast, Gary Paffett is P2, Bruno Spengler is P3. Title contender De Resta works his way laboriously through the field. But then he has some bad luck. So Philip Eng runs uh, Paul De Resta right out, but Paul De Resta has got the momentum here. And that was a very, very good, well engineered overtake from Paul De Resta. But here comes Philip Eng on him. Oh, and around goes Paul De Resta. There was obviously contact there with Philip Eng. We just saw the back end of Philip Eng getting to the inside of Paul De Resta. The worst fears are realised. Not enough speed over the full distance. All of a sudden, Bruno Spengler is right on terms with uh, Gary Paffett. Dives to the inside, got a very clear line going into the inside. Gary goes wide to try and get the uh, cut back here, but Bruno Spengler makes the car quite wide. I think on base pace, though, Ricky, I would say that the BMW of Bruno Spengler does look quicker than the Mercedes of Gary Paffett. Would you agree? I would agree with that. Rennie Rast will head towards the chequered flag to win at the Nürburgring. We need to find some pace for tomorrow, man. They were, they were just too quick. From this race weekend on, everything is different. And then on Sunday, another old problem resurfaces. Pit stops. In now comes Gary Paffitt. This is going to be a really important stop. He has to be absolutely perfect. So we run the clock on the Gary Paffitt car, as Ricky has indicated, it's crucial, critical where he comes out relative to uh, Rene Rast. This is not a quick time, a problem with the rear. 11.1 seconds, he's prevented from leaving the pit lane because of other cars in the pit lane. That was costly. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. From P2 down to P5. A mistake that could cost him the championship. But playing the blame game doesn't win titles. Everyone knows what's at stake in this year of all years. You feel really bad when, when these things happen. You feel really bad. And in this moment, I want to disappear. <laughs> Rennie Rast then, what a weekend it has been for this driver. He takes two out of two at the Nürburgring. Rennie Rast is race winner once again. One race weekend that changes everything. The team now know for certain that there won't be any presence in their final season. Sorry. But as a, as a team, we're going to lose the championship. I tell you, Rennie is going to destroy us. And for sure, this tyre pressure shit has fucked him as well. So if he does win it, it's because of that. Sorry, so much. We'll get next time, eh? Next yeah. time we're gonna... The euphoria of the past weeks is long gone. Hope had turned to confidence. Then the pendulum swung back in the other direction. The dream is in danger. Now, really, every second counts. I just couldn't keep up with the guys in front, so that's pretty much pretty much it. We've shifted from being a grouping at the top five out of the top ten to uh, concentrated at the back, even. Yeah, you're just driving slowly. That is exactly what happened. Degradation stayed the same, but the minimum tyre pushes that have cost us performance race pace. Yeah. But they're trying to make the championship more exciting. Um, we must not panic here. The lead in the championship is still comfortable, but there are another four races left and they can go Audi's way and against Mercedes-Benz. The competition from Ingolstadt stakes everything on one card, a card called René Rast. The reigning champion is granted safe passage. Rast is ahead of Paul de Resta. Is Nico Muller all of a sudden going to have a problem? Look and at that! Look at that! 
So, Renny Rass goes through on Nico Muller. And look for the drag for the start-finish line, and who's going to take the win? It's going to be Renny Rast. That was proper uh, teamwork there to, uh, to help him out. Uh, so Renny Rast has one more turn to do. Four wins in a row, two at Nürburgring, two at the Red Bull Ring. Renny Rast wins race two ahead of uh, Nico Muller. Gary Paffer will be on the podium for P3. Paul DiResta will take P4. Boy, jeez, that was painful. Suddenly, the risk of losing everything is staring them in the face. Will it be a showdown without a happy ending? I'm 199 for René Rast. If you were writing a story for the final chapter, it couldn't be much closer than this, could it? It can literally go either way at the moment. In Affalterbach, the team has just one priority doing everything in their power for their last weekend in the DTM to bring the title home. For one man, it will be a finale under particular pressure. Oscar. His mistake at the pit stop won't happen again. That is his firm intention. For him, it's a weekend for making amends. After Nürburgring, no? when, uh, when you come back home, uh, you feel really bad, no? And I don't want to finish like this my 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 year, uh, the season uh, like doing pit stop because they trust with me, and uh, I think that I can do it, no? Come on, uh, I know the pressure will be a, a lot, will be higher, but I want I want to take it this risk, this uh, responsibility, and and. And I feel really, really, really good. I had an Oscar and I said, okay, how does it look? Then a einzel with an Oscar and he said, he can do it, he wants to do it. And then there's no question for me, then we do it. And he gets the maximum support. René Rast. In Hockenheim too, he's seen as unstoppable. For the team, there's only one goal. Defending his hard-won cushion. Of course, we'd like to finish on a high, but in reality, we know that we are now weaker than we were at the start of the season. We were removing some rear wing from our car and the, in between qualifying and race. That would normally result in an oversteer balance. So we were then lowering the rear tyre pressure to recover that balance. The, the regulation change means we can't recover that using the tyre pressures. So we are now stuck. We can't take the rear wing off and that does slow us down in a race, which is a problem. Just getting it over the finish line. Exactly, just get it over the finish line. Arriving for the decisive final race weekend. At the start of the season, they had traveled to Hockenheim under completely different conditions. Now, five months later, they will see if their last year in the DTM is crowned with an historic victory. Welcome to the finale. It is the last appearance in DTM of Mercedes-Benz. 30 years in uh, DTM, as they bow out after this race, after 30 glorious years, and very, very sad to see them go. The result on Saturday is the mirror image of the past weeks. Rast does what he has to do. Mercedes-Benz, however, suffers an unpleasant surprise. Title contender De Resta seems not to be able to find the form he needs in Hockenheim. Now he has only an outside chance. It's looking like Rast versus Paffet, Audi versus Mercedes-Benz, all or nothing. And that in the three pointed stars last race in the DTM. Nein, ich glaube grundsätzlich gehst du in so einen Tunnelblick rein. Ähm, an der einen oder anderen Stelle, glaube ich, in der Vorbereitung äh, denkst schon, oh, das ist jetzt das letzte Mal, dass du auf den, so ein DTM-Rennen fährst gemeinsam. 
Aber während dem DTM-Wochenende denkst du da überhaupt nicht mehr dran. Und dann der Sonntag, das ist einfach irgendwo der Climax, muss man schon ganz klar so sagen. Und die Anspannung wurde immer größer. 7 a.m. The Hotel Car Park. Two title contenders. One on one. There are six and a half hours to go until the final showdown. It's strange how championships go. You know, it's uh, all come down to the last race. Everybody gets nervous at some at some point. We all, we all get nervous. Going into the final race, leading the championship. He's been in this position once before. But for Paffett, the memories are painful. They go back to 2012, the start of a new era in the DTM. The series gained a new team called BMW. Die sind mit vielen Menschen gekommen, mehr als, als ich das von, von Audi beobachten konnte und wusste von, von Mercedes. Die Aufgabestellung war bei BMW klar, maximale Performance äh, und jetzt sperren wir zehn Ingenieure in einen Raum, gib eine Aufgabe, da kommt meistens was raus. Das war ganz einfach nochmal eine Stufe mehr und das war ein Thema, wo sich alle an, die an, bei den anderen Herstellern, nämlich der Mercedes und wir als Audi, äh, darauf einstellen mussten und diesen Schritt ganz einfach äh, mitmachen mussten. Wenn ein neuer dazu kommt, der mischt mal das Establishment auf und das ist uns, ich glaube, unerwartet in, in 2012 sehr, sehr gut gelungen. But Mercedes surprised everyone and won the opening race with a dominant Puffet in top four. And where we then actually the first race in Hockenheim derart dominated, it was a declassation of other opponents. I have to say that it was extremely positive. Yeah, for 2012 was one of my best years ever. Yeah, absolutely. My performance that year was incredible, you know, it really was. Over the course of the season, BMW will grow ever stronger with former Mercedes driver Spengler. Yet, Paffett seems unbeatable. And Gary Paffett zigzags it across the line to take the victory here. And Gary had this dominated, there was the whole season vorne. But the tide turns. There, Spengler takes the flag. Gary Puffin goes behind. For the second half of the season, um, BMW just had a better car than us. For a lot of the, the last three or four races, I was the sole Mercedes fighting at the front against BMWs, Benz Bruno and the other BMWs. Mercedes Benz against BMW. A finale with a special piquancy, particularly for Martin Marx. This year of all years, he dares to swap teams. Das war für mich auch eine, eine sehr emotionale Geschichte hier. Da schlagen sicherlich zwei Herzen. Die, die, die schlugen auch die ganze Saison durch. Äh, in mir einmal bin ich so ein Mercedes-Kind, habe das, das Handwerk dort gelernt und äh, dann habe ich die Herausforderung angenommen, zu BMW zu gehen. It turns out to be one of the most dramatic title battles in the history of the DTM. Spengler gegen Peffitt, äh, die letzten Runden, da muss ich ehrlich sagen, jeder Funkspruch von Bruno, ich fühle eine Vibration im Auto oder sowas, ja, der hat dich dann wirklich an den Rand des nervlich Ertragbaren gebracht. A heart-stopping final race. Und dann haben wir den Meister des Jahres 2012. Es ist Bruno Spengler im BMW. Gary Peffitt, hier sehen wir ihn, der Unterlegene heute. Er hat mir leid getan. Hat mir wirklich richtig leid getan. Natürlich habe ich mich gefreut für das Team Schnitzer, aber Gary hat mir leid getan da. Äh, denn er hat den Start, äh, ich sag's heute, versemmelt. Äh, er hat alle Möglichkeiten gehabt, das nach Hause zu fahren, hat er leider nicht getan. Oh, meine Güte. Und das ist natürlich hier. Die tun mir richtig leid. Die Köpfe waren weg. Was soll man dazu sagen? Man, da waren wir alle fertig. Ja? Für mich war ja die moralische Siege der Saison Gary, aber das habe ich auch in der DTM gelernt, dass kein interessiert sich für moralische Siege. It was tough, but um, honestly, I didn't, I didn't know what to, what to think or what I wanted to do at that time.
you can't get away quickly. You know, that's the thing. You can't just, just get on a plane and go. There's so much stuff to do. Um, so you're still involved in the whole thing for a long time afterwards. So the, the misery really soaks in and, and you can't move on from it for, for a long time. A lot of things have gone against the team. A lot of things have gone against us and a lot of things have, have, have been trying to stop us winning this championship. So uh, to eventually come away winning the championship, will we, will we, will we, as it happens, will be a massive thing for the team because you know, we haven't won the championship for a few years and, and we've been made to work for it this year. So. Morgan. Morgan. Thank you. Thank See you, Sean. And uh, yeah, so it's, you know, they've, they've made us work hard for this year. Um, so when hopefully we can, we can achieve it as a team and, and it will be a massive relief and a massive achievement. It was six years ago, the lost finale of 2012. The parallels with this year cannot be ignored. Today, not only he can lose everything, the hopes of more than 200 team employees are also resting on his shoulders. The pressure couldn't be any greater. It's the most important qualifying session of his career. Vying for pole is always a vital battle in the DTM. Today, more than ever. Because the new regulations mean there's no chance for them to come back through the field. This is the moment that is decisive. And René Rast sets the pace. And uh, this is the critical one. This is the important one, potentially, with regards to the Drivers' Championship. It's René Rast now, and he goes quickest by some two tenths. Pavit has to counter-attack, driving at the absolute limit, and even beyond. OK, lap cancel, lap cancel, back off. And the chance is written for Gary Pavit. That is natürlich a catastrophe for Gary Pavit now. He's only on the 9. Just get your tyres ready and stuff, but keep position. We have plenty of time. Now he only has one last chance. Three, two, one, zero. Gary is not going to be able to get another lap in. Seine zweite versuchte Runde, aber das wird nicht reichen. Auf die drei. The scene is set. Qualifying has delivered for the drama for the race to come this afternoon. But he has no support. Yeah. Yeah. Where did that lap come from? Well, last year, this was the difference last year. This year he's able to drag up. He's dragging laps out that shouldn't be there, really. Third place for Paffett would guarantee him the championship. And that is all that counts. I know that on Sunday the pit stop will be really important. And yeah, I feel nervous. What I feel this weekend is the strongest group of people have come together to, to nail this. And when it's about pressure, embrace it, love it. Pressure is the best feeling when it's up there. Don't fear it. Don't try to be extra special, extra terrestrial. Five sec Nobody needs five second pit stops. We just do a solid job. We are calm. We are ruthless. We are cold blooded. We execute because we love pressure. So let's get out there and kick some ass. Thank you very much. such a great ambassador for Mercedes-Benz. He's had a hugely long career in DTM and a hugely successful career in DTM. So for Mercedes to bow out of DTM, to do so by taking the Drivers' Championship, but to take it with Gary Baffert is something very special, isn't it? Here we go. We have five red lights.
minutes, the lights go out. Let's go racing for the final time in 2018 with DTM. Rennie Raston, brilliant start, puts himself ahead of Marco Wittmann. Gary Paffett maintains that P3 position. Six, that's good enough. Yes! isn't he as Nico Muller goes past Edo Mortara here with the GRS assist on the inside Nico Muller is um, another one of the very quick drivers out there at the moment You're as right. the race continues towards the end the Audi just seems to be getting stronger and stronger and stronger and particularly this man Robin Frines he is he is on fire isn't he one two three four five he's going to finish sixth see the Mercedes-Benz of Gary Paffett that's running in P3. He starts his last lap. Nico Muller is chasing. You know, it is literally on a knife edge, and this, this time to fight, we couldn't have asked for anything better, and um, it's going to come right down to the last lap, last corner. Gary, you're one minute. How must the pressure be mounting on Gary now? The Mercedes-Benz driver, Gary Paffett, is going to head towards the timing line and becomes the champion. Thank you so much. 
You know, our guys are incredible. You know, we we did it ourselves. We we fought hard. Thank you so much, guys. Guys, you all really deserve this. to motorsport I didn't do it to be famous and didn't do it to be remembered but now I'm so proud to have made a mark on the history of Mercedes-Benz and on the history of DTM like the people that are that are up there you know Bernie Schneider, Klaus Ludwig they will always be remembered in in DTM history and I'm very happy that hopefully I'll be remembered for, for sort of decades to come and then the moment arrives the moment to say goodbye to something big that brings an era of motor racing history to an end. Da geht etwas wirklich äh, verloren, was du gestaltet, erkämpft, äh, gebaut hast, was für mich von der DTM eigentlich bleibt, was für tolle Zeiten wir hatten. Schönste Kapitel in meinem Leben. Da war die glücklichste Jahr in meinem Leben, auch wenn sie top war. Aber das ist absolut das Jahr, wenn ihr über mein Leben denkt, dann das steht das auf erster Stelle. 30 Jahre der Serie letztlich einen Stempel aufzudrücken und das darf Mercedes wohl von sich behaupten, das ist gelungen und das ist mit einer sehr, sehr starken Mannschaft gelungen. Und sicherlich auch gelungen durch eine durch eine Initialzündung, die der Professor Huber damals gegeben hat äh, und gesagt hat, jetzt treten wir hier an und jetzt wollen wir Kunden gewinnen, jetzt wollen wir unsere Marke dynamisieren. 30 Jahre lässt man nicht einfach hinter sich. Das werde ich mit Wehmut betrachten. Auf der anderen Seite natürlich auch mit einem Gefühl, ja, großen, großen Glücks, so etwas erleben zu dürfen. 